About four years ago, I created a video where I tested the pH levels of some popular brands of bottled water using a reagent test solution. Many people were outraged at the fact that I'd used an iodine-based solution to perform this test. But I can assure you that the reagent test solution is specifically designed to test the pH of water. If you would like to know exactly what that solution is, I've placed a link in the description of this video. Now the video to date has had over 1.5 million views and rising. And although it has become quite popular, it has also created a lot of controversy amongst many of the people who have viewed it. Now I of all people understand that when you voice your opinions and beliefs on YouTube, you need to expect some negative feedback and a number of nasty comments. But having said that, I was not expecting to receive death threats and people advising me to buy a gun and shoot myself. All of this over a video about water of all things. Personally, I feel sorry for you because anyone that is full of that much hatred is most likely living a miserable existence themselves, so I hope things turn around for you very soon. Now for this reason, I decided to disable the comment section because comments of that nature have no place on my channel. I also had plenty of comments from people that in my opinion harbour a deep resentment towards anything that even resembles complementary medicine. Many of you, and you know who you are, would often demand scientifically backed evidence to prove that there are health benefits from drinking alkaline ionised water. Although many studies and clinical trials have been conducted outside of the US such as Japan for one, getting this type of clinical evaluation by the FDA would be a very expensive exercise. How expensive you might ask? Well, here are some figures for you to ponder on. In 1975, the pharmaceuticals industry spent the equivalent of $100 million in today's money for the research and development of the average drug approved by the US Food and Drug Administration. By 1987, that figure had tripled to $300 million. By 2005, this figure had more than quadrupled to $1.3 billion. It was estimated that 12 leading pharmaceutical companies from 1997 to 2011 had spent $802 billion to gain approval for just 139 drugs, which is a staggering $5.8 billion per a drug. So, unless you're a pharmaceutical conglomerate and can afford this type of money, what chance does a company that manufactures water ionizers have to get their product approved by the FDA? The Food and Drug Administration have their own agenda, and I can assure you they don't have your best interest at heart. If you have even the slightest curiosity about this subject, I suggest you do yourself a favour and watch a documentary called War on Health, the FDA's Cult of Tyranny. I've also placed the link to the documentary in the description of this video. I would now like to clear up a few things about alkaline ionized water. Note that I am saying ionized water and not just alkaline water. Ionized water is created by an electrical process called ionization or water electrolysis. This is clearly shown in my bottled water test, but obviously it needs some further explanation, so pay close attention. Now because alkaline ionized water contains so many active hydrogen molecules, it is able to act as a powerful antioxidant that searches out and destroys free radicals called reactive oxygen species. These ROS are created by the many metabolic and digestive processes in our bodies. As they travel throughout the body, they can damage cells and DNA, leading to many diseases and cancers. The formation rate of diseases such as ulcers, cancers and diabetes are encouraged or increased by this damage when the hydrogen molecules of alkaline ionized water search out and neutralize these harmful free radicals, they help to prevent and lower the risk level of developing many of these diseases. So the filter in the machine contains minerals which in turn raises the pH of the water and the hydrogen molecules are produced by the ionization process. The alkalinity of the water is beneficial, but it is the hydrogen molecules that have a real effect on our health. Now I need to address the many people who believe that a pH level of 10 is no different to drinking bleach. First of all, the pH level of bleach is 12 and above depending on the manufacturer. The demonstration I performed in the video was to show you the maximum pH level the machine is capable of producing. Water at pH 10, although safe, should really only be used for cooking purposes and not for drinking. I myself drink water between a pH level of 8 to 9. So if this section of the video caused any confusion, I sincerely apologize. For anyone watching my videos or visiting my channel, please understand that the information I share with you is based on my own research and experience. I will only ever recommend products and supplements that I myself have taken. 
I'm not here to convince you or convert you to my way of thinking, but rather I am simply sharing the things that I've tried and that have worked for me. If you do not believe in the effectiveness of complementary medicine, then there is really no reason for you to be here in the first place, other than maybe post some nasty comments and try to disprove everything I say. So rather than me engaging in a barrage of back and forth comments that really go nowhere, I will simply ignore you and in some abusive cases block you from my channel. I also want people to know that I have nothing against the mainstream medical community. In many situations they have their place and without doctors and surgeons we would be in a lot of trouble. Doctors are very effective when it comes to diagnosing illness. If I was in an accident I would need a skilled surgeon to patch me up. But the majority of doctors are not in the business of curing or preventing disease. This is not always because they don't want to help people get better. If anything, most people become doctors in the first place for this very reason. But your general GP is predominantly trained in pharmacology and how to prescribe the right drugs for you. Now if you are a doctor and you're watching this video, please do not take offence because I am not saying that that is the only thing that you do. But it does make up a large portion of your working day. I also believe that there are times when we might actually need prescribed medication. For example, if you come down with a severe case of food poisoning, you might need medication to stop the vomiting or diarrhoea. Or you might have a severe infection that requires a course of antibiotics. There are times in our lives where prescription drugs might have to be taken in order to feel better. But in my opinion, this should always be a last resort and prevention is the best cure. If you're healthy and have a strong immune system, chances are you will rarely need to see a doctor, let alone take medication. By the way, I am not referring to medications for chronic diseases such as diabetes, asthma, arthritis and so on. But here's something to keep in mind. Over 100,000 people on average in the United States alone die every year as a result of taking prescription drugs. But there has never been a single documented case of someone dying from taking vitamins or any type of complementary medicine. For the majority of debilitating diseases on this planet, there is only one cure and that is prevention. Please take the challenge and open your mind to the possibilities of complementary therapies. I ask you to do your own research and try it for yourself first before setting out to discredit my advice. I really thank you for watching and if you like this video please subscribe to my channel.